For those that can't see you, <laughs> you are rocking some adorable braids in the form of Beverly. You are Beverly. I'm cosplaying as Beverly. <laughs> yes. I feel like I'm doing also some Wednesday Adams vibes because she has the pigtails as well. Definitely Wednesday Adams. I'm either one of those two. This was not planned, by the way, guys. Like, don't worry. <laughs> I don't dress up for our podcasts <laughs> that nobody oh sees. God. But, but they don't know that, so they how don't. fun would that be if you did? Well, um, I don't, so I'm sorry to ruin the, you know, facade or whatever. <laughs> I'm just glad you're not Pennywise, because Oh my god, could I you imagine? Be. What would you do if, like, you turned on the Zoom and I was just, like, a clown? <laughs> would you, like, no. scream? No, i I leave the room. Or it was, like, the Zoom opens and I'm, like, sitting in a sewer, like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Just get in the mood. <laughs> I'm sure there's some scary backgrounds we could play with, which we should do more, but we don't. We don't. I think it's because when we start, we kind of like just talk about life and stuff. And then we're like, oh, yeah, we should podcast. So it'd be weird to all of a sudden like add a background picture. Also, whenever I try to do background pictures, my face blends into the background and then I have no face. So oh. that's weird. I don't know what that means <laughs> I don't for me. <laughs> so I don't so, either. Something's wrong. Yep. Sisters, sisters who seen it. We are the sisters, sisters who seen it. Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, 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 sisters. Sisters who seen it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hello! <laughs> wow, Bridge, for being terrified of Pennywise, you sure are uh, really playing the part there. Woo. Okay. Uh, wow. You know, it's not as scary when you're the monster, Kate. This is true. <laughs> this is the truth. Welcome back, listeners. Um, we hope that you are looking into a sewer grate as you listen to us. For some reason, I'm envisioning our voices coming out of a sewer grate, so someone must have maybe dropped their phone. I don't know. <laughs> That's where we are today. Well, well. Well, let me introduce ourselves so you know who you're talking to in this sewer grate. <laughs> Okay. So, we are the Sisters Who Seen It, the podcast where two sisters who are not movie critics look back on some of our favorites throughout the years through a psychological, ethical, and familial lens. I'm Katie. I'm Bridget. And we all float down here, and you <gasps> will too. They that was so good! Out. Bridge, I love this movie so much. Like, like too much of it I can quote from my brain. Oh my god, you did that really good. Thank you. Thank you so Kate, much. What's the movie? And I want the proper grammar. <laughs> okay, well, the movie is It. Uh, capital I-T. Uh, part Uno. Uh, what? Oh, Stephen King's It. Is that what you want? Mm-hmm. There's probably a apostrophe in there. Okay, well, mm-hmm. we, you know, we all know it as It, all right? Kate. It's the one with the clown guys, <laughs> all right? And it's from 1990. This is the miniseries. Ooh. Yep. Oh, my gosh. And the only way to do this synopsis is with you doing it. Okay. Are you sure? I am sure oh, because okay. this kind of feels up there like Jurassic Park for like your oh, love no. with this. Oh, no. I recap the whole movie. <laughs> you recap the oh. whole movie, but I don't mind it because we're only doing the first half of the movie. That's true. Which is actually like a movie in itself. Which, listeners, I want to point out, and Bridget, I'm guessing you watched this on HBO Max. I watched it on Amazon. Bridget! My god! I literally use your HBO Max. You need, to, you need to source check better before you buy things. I, so I googled it and it only said like Hulu and Amazon. Oh my god. Different. Okay, well anyway, if you watch this on a streaming... It isn't broken up into two parts. It is listed as like a three hour movie. So if you are following along with us, make sure it's like, it's pretty evenly halfway. I think it was like a little over an hour and a half is where part one ends. Tell the scene, Kate, because you had to tell me. Oh, so the scene where it ends is where Stanley, who's a little bitch, um, 
dates. So or... related to Stan. I said Bridget. <laughs> no, you're not a little bitch. He decides to complete suicide, which is sad. And then his wife finds him and makes a really funny scrunchy face. And I just killed a spider on my hand as I was talking in that sentence. So there's a lot of spoopy things happening right now. Good God. So, but that it was helpful because I didn't realize it kept going. And I'm like, this seems really long. And thank God you knew that because I would have been like really mad to keep watching the whole movie. Yeah, I knew where it stopped because I have seen this movie too many times and we used to own it in VHS and on the VHS there were two different VHSs so then it would like, you obviously knew where it started and stopped but then I got the DVD version and on the DVD version it's one disc but you have to <laughs> flip it to get to the second part. Listeners, the thing that you can't see is <laughs> Tina is very animated with her hands but in today's episode she's whipping her braids around I, yeah, and I that's love it. My like hands are like this is the <laughs> emphasis. The braids fly around. All right. Um synopsis let's go <sighs> and i want pennywise voice for the appropriate parts thank you i will good day okay i'll try my best but i'm gonna also try to not get carried away just be your horror loving self and i'm gonna put this on mute no i'm kidding nope. <laughs> 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 okay, well, we start off with some old photo credit stuff. And we're seeing the children. That's nice. Great day. And then you see the credits, blah, blah. But then we open and it's the town of Derry, Maine. D-E-R-R-Y, listeners, not the milk. <laughs> I don't know why I felt that was important for you guys to know, but you, you never know when it's going to come and up not trivia. And Dairy Girls. And it's not Although Dairy they girls. have an Irish cop. It's so. not the same as Dairy Girls, but it is not an Irish town. Yep. <laughs> um, this is in Maine, and so it's present day, and you see a little girl who, I don't know how old she is, maybe five or six. Yeah. She's little, and, you know, by herself, it's fucking fine, everyone. Triking around the neighborhood in the rain, um, and then her mom's like, get inside, you, come on now, and the girl kind of starts to follow, but we real quick get introduced to the best character of the movie that scared Bridget, but he's the best. <sighs> Pennywise, the dancing clown, who's played by Tim Curry, who is the best. And you see kind of flashes of him, and at first he's like nice, and he's like, hi. And you're like, ah, I'm still scared because you're a clown and don't trust the clowns. What are we doing? But the children trust the clowns because they don't know shit yet. They haven't gone through the trauma <laughs> of growing up yet, but they will. And then, you know, he, uh, he like kills her. So <laughs> she, she did. Um, it's bad. And so this kicks off the plot because, again, this is present day. This is the first, not the first kid, but there's been, like, a couple kids that have either turned up dead or missing. And I think the number was six, which is six. really ridiculous because this town, to me, I'm like, this is a small town. So, like, what are we doing? But you meet one of the main characters whose name is Mike Hanlon. He is one of the kids who was friends with a whole bunch of other kids who were the main characters. They were in this group. And he's the only one that still lives in the town of Derry, Maine. So he has kind of been like, you know, creeping around the, <laughs> the crime scenes, if you will, because he has a feeling he knows what's going on. And the police don't want to hear it because he's a librarian. Don't diss the librarians because they're important jobs, y'all. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you for coming to our podcast. That's all we have to say. All right. So he's the only one in this town and he's like, oh, snap. This stupid ass clown is back. We're screwed. I got to call the people because we made a promise when we were like 11 and you know any promise you make when you're 11 or 12 you totally have to keep <laughs> guys right okay. you also totally have everyone's phone number totally yeah Facebook we're, gonna to, we're gonna have to talk about that because that was kind of funny that's always a funny part so he starts to call all the other kids and there's six other people that were a part of this group they used to call themselves the losers club because they all are losers Okay, so the first one he calls is Bill, and Bill is basically Stephen King. He's the hero. He's sure. Yeah, okay. You know, he was the brave one. I guess. Um, okay, so he's the writer. He is married, and he gets a call from Mike, and then he is like, who are you? And the Mike's like, I'm Mike. And he's like, ah, Mike. 
it's you. Oh my God. <laughs> and then he's like, oh my God, I forgot who you were. And then he starts to remember all of the trauma because we got trauma, y'all. Take a sip for all the traumatic trauma because it's a lot. So he's like, oh my God, I used to have a brother who <laughs> literally was murdered. <laughs> Don't worry, audience. Let's flash back and watch it. And you do. And you see that there was a time where Bill, a little brother Georgie, and Georgie was, I guess, maybe again, like five, six, seven. I'm not really sure. And Georgie's super cutesy. And Bill's like, yo, 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 I made this little paper bowl for you, I suppose. Whatever. Get out of my face with it. Bye. And Georgie's like, yippee, I'm going to go play in the street by myself. Because that's what five-year-olds do. Here we go. And guys... Mm-mm. 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 No, Mm-mm. not good. Georgie loses that boat real quick. And then he's kind of like, well, what was me? Time to leave. And then, <gasps> then you see Katie and Bridget in the sewer. No, I'm just kidding. You don't see us. <laughs> you don't see us, but you do see Pennywise. And this time we see him a lot more. He is, you just see his head, which is like really creepy. <gasps> and he's very friendly. And he's like, hello, I have your boat. Nice to meet you. Hiya, Georgie. That's how he talks. Okay, I am Georgie and Pennywise the Dancing Clown. This is a great scene to show children to talk about Stranger Danger, by the way, because Georgie's a dummy, and he's like, I can't talk to strangers! And then Pennywise is like, my name is Pennywise, and you're Georgie, now we're friends. And then Georgie's like, you're right. I'm like, Georgie, incorrect. (laughs) That is wrong. So, moral of the story, uh, yeah, Georgie (laughs) died. (laughs) <laughs> gets, his, gets his arm ripped off, which leads to him dying. We don't see it, but it's scary. And then we're like, oh, woe is me. Georgie's dead. But then after Georgie dies, Bill sees some creepy shit. And none of his parents see this stuff. So it's just him. And then he's like, I'm trauma. And then he's like, now I'm an adult and I got to go back to Maine. Bye, wife. Deuces. So that's Bill. Um... Yeah. Okay. So then Ben is next. Ben is played by John Ritter. Rest in peace. Oh, yeah. He's great. He is now, as an adult, he is an architect, uh, very successful, if you will. And his whole arc is lame because his whole arc was, I used to be the fat kid. That's it. And I had a crush on a girl, but she didn't like me because you want to take a guess why? Because I was fat. Did you guys get that? All right, cool. I need to interject, so let me interject. Okay. Because I watched Honest Trailers for this, <laughs> and they made the funniest line. Oh, They're what's like, it? Watch the movie It, where fat kids weren't even fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. I'm like, uh, he doesn't look like fat. No. Nope. What? No. Nope. I hate, I hate everybody. No, not so, good. Continue. <laughs> so that's his arc. And now he's an adult and I guess he's not that. Okay, fine. So he gets a call from Mike and his whole kind of story when he was a kid was he was new to the town and he very quickly got on the bad side of this b- 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 bully who is named Henry Bowers, who is a, uh, I'm pretty sure textbook definition of a sociopath. Ugh. He's, like, a scary bully, and he tries to, like, cut Ben and, like, shank him, and Ben gets away, so great. Ben ends up meeting Bill and another kid, Eddie. They become friends. Life is great. And you're like, wow, life is wonderful. Except life isn't wonderful for Ben, because remember, he's fat! Everything's (laughs) wrong! Oh, no! So he meets Beverly, who then becomes another friend of the friends. I hope y'all are keeping track, because this is gonna be a quiz later. (laughs) Meets Beverly. He likes her, because she said hi once. You know, that's all you need, I guess, to get a crush on someone, fine. He hates his life. He writes her a poem. She thinks the poem is from someone else. All this stuff. So he's like, wham, I'm gonna go in the woods and be sad. He goes in the woods and is sad. And then he sees his own scary stuff, which is a, I guess, like a hallucinate. I'm not really sure. He's, he thinks he sees his dad, who looks like a cardboard cutout with a waving arm. And that should have been your first clue that that's not correct. But then it obviously yeah. is Pennywise. 
dies. And Ben gets away, but that's kind of his, like, oh shit, I've seen some stuff. And whatever. Okay, great. So then we meet Beverly as an adult. Beverly, ugh, her story's also fucking annoying. Her story is she's a successful designer, and she has a boyfriend who's, like, hecka abusive, and he has a weird, patchy, hairy chest that, like, I would've broke up with him, you know, like, <laughs> second date when I saw that, because I just don't know how he lasted till this point. Super but classy, Kate. Second date. I'm just saying Way the real talk, alright? I'm just, you know, <laughs> too much. So, when she was younger, had an abusive dad. So there's, like, a theme with that, I suppose. Whatever. And when she was younger, her scary thing that she ended up seeing, which I think is, like, the scariest of all of them, in all honesty, is she's in her bathroom, where we all want to feel safe, and usually we're vulnerable, and I'm afraid. And there's, like, scary voices coming from the sink. (gasps) And then, like, blood balloon explodes, and there's blood everywhere, and her dad does not see it. So, that's the worst. And again, she kind of then meets up with the other boys. She meets up with Ben, Bill, and Eddie, and then they kind of, like, hang out and whatever. And then she starts to, like, Bill. She's like, oh my god, Bill wrote me a poem. I hate it. Alright, so that's Bev, and then Bev is like, you know, screw you, boyfriend. I'm gonna beat you up and then go to Maine. Bye-bye. So she does that. Okay, now we are at (laughs) Eddie. So Eddie is, he is, as an adult, he owns, like, a limo company or something. Something. It's something successful, but he lives with his mom. And his mom is a classic case of Munchausen syndrome. And so when Eddie was younger, and, like, you don't really actually see this that much in this first part of the movie, but you get more of this in the second part. There's this whole plot thread with him and his asthma, where he's like, I have asthma, and I'm gonna die without my inhaler, and it's a lot of, like, stuff like that. But then you, in part two, come to find, like, he don't even have asthma, so that's Mm. awkward. But he's friends with all the people, and his whole thing is the mom is like, I don't want you to take a shower in gym class. (laughs) <laughs> um, and then he gets caught and the guy's like, the gym teacher's like, you gotta take a shower. And then Eddie's just like, okay. And I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> really easy turnaround. So Eddie's thing is he's in the shower and the shower comes alive. It's very Adam's family. Everything's moving on its own. And he sees Pennywise and Pennywise comes out of the drain because he lives in the drain and he doesn't like hurt him or kill him. I don't really know. Eddie somehow gets away. Who knows? We don't know. But again, like he's in school and like, you know, y'all think you're safe in school, but mm -mm, Mm -mm. gonna die. Pennywise hangs out a lot in the school, by the way, because he (laughs) comes out at another point. <laughs> You're gonna die. <laughs> You're gonna die in school, everyone. Get ready. So that's Eddie. So Eddie again is like, okay, I gotta go to Maine. Here I go. Okay. I don't know how many people we got there already. All right. <laughs> Next we have Richie. So Richie is a successful comedian as an adult and he gets a call from Mike and then he kind of, and you could tell very quickly, he's very sarcastic. He's very funny. doesn't like take a lot of things seriously, but when he gets the call from Mike, he takes it seriously. Seriously. Very seriously. And he's like, oh shit, we're all gonna die. Here we go. <gasps> and so he has some flashbacks and his whole thing was, he again was like, I mean, all the kids, I guess, were having issues with the bully Henry. He's, you know, basically like a 10, 11 year old serial killer that no one cares about threatening lives all around. So, you know, he's out yeah. to get Richie and there's like a scuffle in the cafeteria and then it leads to Richie then being sent to the basement of the school by himself. As you do with children, you know, just say, listen, hey, I left something in my car, Johnny. Go go out to the parking lot on your own and uh, good luck with that. I hope you don't get hit by a car. Yep, that's how we do it. So (laughs) Richie goes down there and he sees a werewolf. It's, I don't know, he gets scared. And then he sees Pennywise too. So that's kind of like his whole thing. And he's like, oh my God, it's so scary. I hate it. Also, young Richie is played by Seth Green, which is a great day. We love him. We love to see him. So... (laughs) That's Richie. Then it's a weird order of events, but I understand why they did it. Then we get Mike's flashback, even though like, Mike, we know you, silly. You've been making calls and you're the librarian, but fuck that. We're going to get your childhood flashback. Here we go. (laughs) Pause for (sighs) Katie's wine sip. Okay. Continue. They kind of present Mike in a weird way because you're like, are you the new kid? Is this just show and tell? I'm not really sure, but he basically is like, hey guys, I'm in this class too. I know it's been all year, but
but here I am, in case you didn't know, and I'm going to tell you all about this photo album I have of all the horrific tragedies that have happened in this small town over the past 200 years. Here we go. And you're like, wow, that's fucking weird. And it's like kind of some quick exposition you get through where you're like, wow, this town sounds like it sucks. Why do we live here? And nobody answers that. (laughs) And Mike is black, which is important because it comes into the story where, again, Henry Bowers, who is on a rampage threatening children's lives, decides to antagonize Mike and throw racist slurs at him. And then he tries to blow him up with a cherry bomb. And so Mike, you know, has to run away. And then by running away, he runs into the Losers Club, which is all the other children. And this is how they become friends. And he's like, help me, help me. And they're like, we know what to do. We're going to assault them with rocks. (laughs) And then it turns into throwing rocks. And hey, that works. So cool. You know, not the way I teach children how to solve conflicts personally, but (laughs) do what you got to do, I suppose. Times are tough when there's evil clowns, you know? So Mike doesn't really have his own individual, like, Pennywise experience that we see when he's a kid. What he experiences is what everybody else kind of experiences, where they start to then, after all that, and Henry leaves, they're looking through his photo album and his photo album you know it just magically has all these photos of a scary clown committing heinous crimes that I guess Mike never noticed I don't know and then it turns into like you know a little YouTube video via photo album of the clown moving around and then he starts to talk to the kids which is creepy and I love this part and he Ugh. basically says like I'm gonna kill you I'm gonna kill you all blah, blah, blah. and then he reaches through the photo album which is scary too Ugh. yeah so that's all Mike gets okay y'all with me still one last character one more y'all it's stan stan the man he is a boy scout which is another i suppose plot point that they kind of keep referencing a bunch of times and he is playing the part of like i don't believe in this i don't believe in this i haven't experienced anything i don't know what you guys are talking about because there comes a point where all the kids are like yo i had trauma and like i think i'm hallucinating anyone else and then everyone's like yeah and then Stan's like not me and they're like wow so weird so Stan's like I don't believe it blah 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 and then it gets to a point where the kids are like we have to go kill this thing because like the adults suck in the town so it's just us here we go leave it to the children and then Stan is like I guess because peer pressure here I go so they go in the sewer and it's scary And also, uh, they have, you know, the serial killer Henry who follows them down. So there's, like, multiple scaries happening at once. Well, and Stan did see the photos moving. He did. And they were like, Stan, didn't you see it? He's like, I didn't want to. And they're like, Stan, come on, admit it. He's like, okay, fine. And then they're like, we gotta go get him. And Stan's like, wait! Stan's like, no, I hate it. I need to sleep this off. Yeah, he's a very, like, straight and narrow is, I guess, how they portray him. And that, like, I guess kind of goes with the Boy Scout? I don't know. It's weird. So don't worry, guys, because even though Stan didn't have his own horrific individual experiences, he gets a lot of shit thrown at him in these sewers. Tell you what, because he gets literally kidnapped by the murderous bullies, and then he does not get murdered because I don't think they explain what this is, but you basically see this, like, light coming through some of the pipes in the sewer, and it kills one of the bad guys, whose name is Belch, and you later come to find those are called dead lights which is connected to it, which is Pennywise, and blah, blah. But moral of the story is Stan gets away, and then he's like, hey, guys, I'm back. I don't think anyone knew I was gone. Don't <laughs> worry about me. I'm here. But then Stan gets kidnapped again by the clown in front of everyone, and he's about to get his face ripped off. But he gets saved. Great. The kids start to kind of attack Pennywise, and they try to, like, unite together to be like, we're stronger than you, blah, blah. You can't defeat us. We're not going to fall for your tricks, blah, blah, blah. And they kind of do some stuff that then lead to Pennywise retreating and it goes into one of the drains and they hear it kind of making these sounds and they're like, oh, it sounds like he's dying. 
but they don't see that. So they get out of the sewers, and it's Bill, actually, who was like, swear to me that if this thing ever does come back, we'll come back and kill it. And then everyone's like, I swear. And again, Stan's like, guys, I mean, I just tried to get murdered twice. <laughs> like, does anyone else, can anyone else check those off their boxes on the bingo card? Because they can't. So, but then, because of peer pressure, Stan's like, okay, swear again. And they're all like, yippee! So when Mike calls adult Stan, he kind of is like, oh, I guess I'll come, okay. But, mm -mm, he ain't gonna go, because he goes up that bathtub, and he... He, uh, offs himself, and then the wife goes up and makes a scrunchy face, which I'm not, I know I can't laugh at because it's sad, but, like, her acting is... Um, yeah, it's, it's, all I can say is it's scrunchy. What can I say? Wow. How long was that? Cause dang. That was 27 minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> the editing will play. Ah! That will be edited. But wow. Honestly, this book is like a size of a dresser. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. It's really big. And this mini series has to be three hours long because there's so much to fit in. And I think it's relevant to explain each kid's individual experience and to learn who they are as adults and when you got seven of them that shit takes a while it's a lot so yeah you did the best you could thank you so much with that and i think this is a great movie to go character by character and hopefully not repeat all the things you said <laughs> we'll see about that <laughs> But I do want to talk about some other things. Yeah. I want to talk about the music. Oh. Okay. What I've learned from like these amazing composers as we've done these movies is there's usually like a theme song. Yeah. And there's usually kind of like sprinkles of it throughout the movie. And especially when there's like a scary thing, like you think of Jaws. Yeah. You get like a heads up. But this movie was all over the place. Yeah. It was like gangster music. <laughs> At one point, I swear it was Silence of the Lambs music. Oh. Then you had like Jack in the Box, like dee, 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 dee. yeah, like, like creepy very fun kind of house. Kid fun house Ugh. and then you had as we started singing before we started oh it's all right <laughs> the <laughs> it's R&B all good right. feel song the impressions yeah. I think they're called the impressions or whatever <laughs> and you're just like what in the world and then in the midst of it all you're flipping from the 1950s as kids to the 1980s as adults and you're just like I have no idea what era it is nope. I have no idea and we traveled all over the world because we were were in Derry, Maine, yeah. and then they all literally moved around the world. Oh, yeah, I didn't say that. That's correct. I mean, it's not, like, totally relevant, but... It is, because that's why most of them were like, who are you? And they didn't remember. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that they didn't remember the trauma because of trauma. They didn't remember the trauma because when you leave that place, you forget about it, and that is part of why they say, like, when you're an adult, the adults can't see you some can't of the stuff. Okay. Yeah, so it's, like, part okay. of that. It's yeah. exciting. Explain more in the book. Take a sip every time we say that. So you read the book. Oh, you read the book. did I read the book? <laughs> I did read the book. I only read it once. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm so sorry. I read it a while ago, but I remember a lot of parts about it. It was scary. Is, in this first half, is there anything that you wish was included from the book that is not? Yes. What? So some of the, like, what people witnessed as their scary Pennywise moment was different. So for oh. example, Mike, his thing that he experienced, which like this probably would have been really hard to do, and they didn't even do this in the remake, was he was like alone in like this, I feel like it was a field but it was near like some abandoned factory and he sees this like giant creepy bird that tries to kill him. It's like a raven crow or something and tries to kill him and he has to like hide in this like tiny spot and its beak is like trying to peck him and like that was creepy but one of the things that I feel Ooh. like could have been included but it would have been hard was there were more characters in the book that this movie doesn't include and one of them is this I guess one of the bullies his name is Patrick Hawksetter who they do kind of in the remake but like he's a little different in the remake but anyway in the book there's a part where Bev is like alone and she goes to the woods and then she sees this guy and she's like uh oh he's like a bully I'm gonna hide and this guy is like also a psychopath and he had been killing animals and putting it in this like refrigerator in the woods or something Ooh, weird so she's like watching this because she's afraid but then when he goes and he opens the refrigerator inside there's like these like leech things 
things, but this is like Pennywise. And then they turn into like these flying, scary leech things. And then they literally kill him. And then she sees like it turn into the clown and the clown like pull him away. And then she like runs away. Whoa. And there's like way more, but like those two things I remember being like, holy shit, like that's crazy. Wowie, wowie. Yeah. Well, do you agree with me? We should go character by character. Yeah. Okay. I think it's very important to start off with Bill. Bill. I think it's also very important to, and I want to get his name right, Jonathan... Brandis? Yes. Who, very sad. Uh, You know what happened to him in real life. Yes, he took his life. Yeah. And the reason that he did that in his real life is he basically had a series of bad movies and just kind of fell out of fame. So sad. And that's why he was... Yeah. Which is horrific because he's such a good actor. Yeah, I like him a lot in this movie. And as a kid, he was in a lot of, like, famous movies that I remember. And he had this, like, kind of teen heartthrob, like... Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of sad to see him as a kid and remember that because I forgot about him. But in general, you needed, like, a leader of this group. Yeah. And I felt like he did a really good job being, Mm -hmm. like, the leader. But the one thing I didn't like about his character is I felt like he would be the person that when he would ride away would always say <laughs> random shit like like hi ho silver, silver <laughs> or he's like let's go get him guys or i'm back with the inhaler and you're like dude we see you he's like the friend who's like guys we can totally become famous here's my ideas i'm just gonna yell them out loud and we're gonna see what sticks to the wall yeah that was definitely him and i don't think that like adult bill in my opinion represented him I no. felt like adult Bill looked a little bit like a pedophile. <laughs> oh, sorry. Was it the ponytail? <laughs> it was and like the scary pony. glasses. Yeah. Scary glasses, thin pony. He wasn't that nice to his wife. Um, <laughs> and he really forgets that his brother was murdered. Like, I'm just like, yes, what? he does. But he at least <laughs> did remember he had a brother who died. But then he's like, I forgot he was actually horrifically murdered. And my parents I guess also forgot because like you probably met my parents and I'm sure this has come up but like you know it's well, fine it's all fine. And every single spouse that was like the adult version or co-worker or anybody each person was like I gotta go and they're like wait but like can't you explain more and they're like I got, I gotta go and I felt like <laughs> Bill was pretty aggressive to his like wife or whatever yeah. he was like I have to I'm out of here she's like what your brother was murdered what, what the and then you just see him out the door I feel like when you watch part two you'll understand why like they made that so weird because it's like kind of foreshadowing but like not done great um yeah i'm just gonna say this as little kid bill i would never have his guts to be like you know what we gotta do we gotta take this evil demon yeah out Uh uh-uh no no effing way am i ever doing that again i am stan stan is me (laughs) um (laughs) i'm running from this but you needed a character like that and like again jonathan brandis was just so perfect for it well and he also was the only character who actually like had lost something yes because obviously his brother had died and and what's the deal with the stutter did the book describe the stutter better to like i mean just he's scared so he gets a stutter no they just they just had him as like when he was a kid he would stutter and then like he had to work towards like breaking it as most people do but then in part two when he goes back to the town as an adult he starts to stutter again when like he wasn't ever stuttering and it's just like it's kind of tied to the town and the fear i guess but i don't know like kids some kids stutter and then they don't so okay because every now and then his friends would be like i hate when you stutter my name Oh my god, I hated that part. And then other friends are like, you know, you don't know we stutter. And I'm like, wait, is there, is there like a relevance to your stuttering? You know? Like, they're like analyzing him. I'm like, okay. No, but that's Eddie. Eddie is like, I hate when you 
stutter my name, Bill. You sound like Elmer Fudd. I was like, Eddie, you fucking Rudy. Well, you literally just rode through town to get your stupid inhaler. Are you kidding well, me? And Ben accurately corrects him and said, no, that is more Porky Pig. Okay. Your well, right. I don't need your Space Jam <laughs> references in my It movie. Thank you very much. I need you to be nice to your friend, Eddie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, so Bill, brilliant acting. I like seeing the scenes of Bill and Georgie. There's only really one scene, I guess, of them. So you're like, okay, this is it. You gotta show me you like each other. Show me your brothers. Do we care? And Bill is sick. So he's like, I guess, kind of in a bad mood. And the little brother who's Georgie is like, oh my God, Bill, let's hang out. And Bill goes, go bug somebody else, you little cootie. And then there's like more (laughs) cootie references. And it's a weird 50s dialogue. And you're like, you don't even know. The future holds all the cooties. You don't even know about the cooties. Okay? Talk to me. 2020 my god <laughs> but bill basically insults him calls him a cootie and then he's like wait georgie here's a little boat i made in my pocket <laughs> and you're like bill, what? do you like him or you hate him i don't really know oh my god. so it's a little whiplash in my opinion georgie is by far the most stinking cute kid i've ever oh my god. seen in my life though oh he's so cute he's like just innocent it's pure innocent so sad when you're like oh you little dummy you're getting your arm ripped off because you're, well, you're too cute okay and the thing is is like what makes this movie scary is you don't see a lot of yes. like the kids actually getting ripped apart. Yeah. And only later does Eddie share with us, yeah, don't talk about it, but his brother Georgie died by getting his arm ripped off like a fly. I was yep. like, what? <laughs> so, you know the part at the end of the movie and they're in the sewer and then they start to see those like hallucinations where he sees Georgie and Georgie's like, Bill, my boat, blue, blue, and that's like whatever. And they're like, that's not Georgie, Bill. Like, So if you look really closely, that Georgie, he's wearing his yellow raincoat. He only has one arm there. Which again, to me, I'm like, Bill, use the eyeballs on your face to look better because (laughs) that's your dead brother's Nation. Great. Well, I don't have much else to say on Bill, but we quickly meet the fat kid who's not fat, Ben. Yeah. Which John Ritter, right away, in my opinion, made us think he was going to jump off the top of that building. Oh, yeah. And I was like, really? Because, like, John Ritter's, like, a lot of money. We're just going to kill him right away? Like, like he's a great actor. Can we keep him in? And I was happy he didn't do it. I would like to read a note I made about John Ritter's entrance because when you meet him he is very drunk and he is with a woman and the lady is wearing this fucking dress with like (laughs) the biggest sleeves I've ever seen in my life and I go Ben is hella drunk with some lady wearing a Deb from Napoleon Dynamite dress (laughs) with poofy sleeves so I just needed to make sure we're all on the same page with that because like what she definitely looks like Deb oh my god (laughs) she also acted like Deb because he was super drunk right? yeah so was she and when they went upstairs they're basically like brown chicka wow wow he gets the call Ow! and you know he then is acting weird because he has that phone call and so she goes are you okay normal question right yeah. this is where you think Deb is normal yeah and then he doesn't really say much and then she goes are you gonna kill yourself <laughs> I was like whoa Deb whoa. Well, she says, you're gonna kill yourself as in like with his drinking I'm like bitch you you drunk too. I don't oh, want to hear that hypocriticalness. I thought, I thought she just asked, like, are you okay? <laughs> oh, no answer. Are you going to kill yourself? I was like, whoa, that was a big jump. No. And then he went up on the roof and I thought, oh boy. He like, also, this is where you learn that, you know, even though Ben is an adult and you assume like we all get over our childhood insecurities, no, no, because just as Ben is canoodling with this lady, he then, no build up, nothing at all. He's like, you know, I used to be fat. Did you know that? And the lady's like, oh, I bet you were cute? Question mark. What? And then he's like, no, I was really fat. And I'm like, ew, this is like the dates that I've been on and I don't know how to okay. fucking respond and I hate this everything. Is, th- okay. Like, that's your arc. Like, you know, the hardest part of my life is I like food. <laughs> and now... I don't eat as much of the food I like. It's like, oh, shut the fuck up. You're so fine. See, Ben is the type of character where, like, if he did remember the trauma from Maine, he'd be, like, about to make out with her, and he'd be like, by the way, just so you know, I had a hallucination (laughs) of my dead dad in the sewer swamp area, and then it was a clown that was actually a skeleton that tried to kill me. Anyway, want to have sex now? And she'd be like, ah, no. 
No. <laughs> well, so, okay, we're like, okay, John Ritter, you're a, a successful architect. And then we go and we meet Ben. He is the new student. Yeah. He is describing, like, some of the things he likes. And he likes to read. And you're getting the sense that he's, like, very sensitive and very smart. Yeah. And in 1990, all smart people become architects. And I find that, like, really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, I thought he was going to go, like, the writer-poet route. Because oh, that's he true. Writes, he writes, like, poems. He d- and he does write the poem. You're right. And he loves to read. Mm. And I just, like, am like, why is Bill the writer? And is it because you're fat so you can't have anything else? Like, well, I don't even. But then with Ben, the build-up he gets is when he meets Bill and Eddie and they're in the woods and they're like, we're trying to build a dam. And then Ben's like, you gotta, like, do boards, guy. I don't, like, you guys are being dumb about it. And then you're like, oh my god, he's an architect. <laughs> what a, <laughs> yeah, what a like, smart brain he has. <laughs> wow, what a day. Yeah, that's the build-up he gets. Honestly, yeah. it's no better in the book. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, it's about okay. the same. So, the other thing that's so sad about Ben's story is his dad died in the war, yeah. which is pretty recent in this 50s time. Right. And so his mom and him have no money, so they have to move in with his aunt. His cousin is a jerk face. Okay, let's take a pause. Does this cousin Ugh. character remind you of any person that we may or may not have been neighbors with at some point that I will not name on this podcast, but I will, oh. but I'll bleep it out. Every time I watch this movie, I'm like, this reminds me of... Because I'm like, you're so annoying and like, you're just like the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So I always think of that person who we will not name. And we've had a lot of neighbors, listeners. So relax, okay? It's probably not you or whatever. I don't know. Oh my God. If we have our our childhood neighbors listening to this, we've made it. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> all right so the cousin's a jerk and <laughs> yeah. then ben's like first of all my first day of school i have a murdering bully who is on the same scary level as the karate kid bully who is <gasps> johnny. Named johnny 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 and like this is johnny's close cousin or grandpa because it was the 50s uh, no one can keep yeah. up mm. um who is also dressed like kaniki and i can't <laughs> He is connected. And all of those, like, pocket knives oh, that they would the press. Switch blades. And, yeah. And the grease and, like, hair. And I, I do feel like Dad definitely, like, had his, like, fair share of bullies like that. Well, Dad got shanked in the butt in Brooklyn, <laughs> New York, running away from someone who tried to steal his brother's watch. People don't forget. McCarran Park. I tell so many people that story, by the way, as if, like, it's really cool and, like, it's not at all. Because, like, he was fine. I don't even think he went to the hospital or anything. <laughs> back, back oh, my God. To, back to I don't ben. even know where we were. Where were we? There. Basically, Ben is shafted. Oh, uh, yeah. until he yeah. becomes a famous architect oh my and God. gets to win awards but i i liked him i thought he was smart and a nice character but like like you said weak arc i like him better as an adult character because he's got a stronger, john ritter Ross. yeah he's written a lot better as an adult and then who do we meet after that bev get your braids out kate because it's your time braids. to shine whip 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 out with my hair back and forth on with my hair y'all remember that bop from uh was that 2010? Willow I don't know. Smith. Willow Smith. People don't forget. Oh my god. Yeah. So Bev. Yeah. Bev is cool. Bev's cool. Bev makes me sad though, because I'm like Bev. Like I don't know. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. I just feel like you're very successful. You own your own business. You're attractive. You're smart. You're nice. <laughs> There's um lots of cool things. I don't know. Like maybe have some standards. <laughs> like he abuses her. Like he physically abuses her. Yeah. Like that's like, that's the main problem. But then there's like <laughs> other problems. But, like, that's the main one, for sure. The thing that you see with her is, like, you meet her through Ben, right? It was like, oh, my God, she's beautiful yeah. and all that. And so, and she's really nice to him. She's like, oh, welcome to town, blah, blah, blah. And then these girls make fun of her because they're like, some people have no class. Some people have janitors as parents. So then you're thinking, oh, well, Ben's just, like, a sweet girl that maybe doesn't have money. That's her story. Yeah. And she's got a, a sweet old janitor parent. And look... Little do you well, know, he's beating the <laughs> shit out of her. He's smacking her around. 
down and he has this weird assumption that she's hooking up with boys. Well, I'm like, okay, so first of all, we have to deal with, there's no mother in this picture. So no. we have a dad helping her like sexually, I like become of age in this like 12 to 13. And he's literally ruining everything. Like anything that she is not doing, he is like creating fear. And now all she does is like date people that abuse her. Like, <sighs> so sad. It's very sad. Um, Did you Ugh. read any fun facts about her character from the book? No, tell me, tell me. Oh, you're not gonna like it. Oh, no. It's really disturbing. Well, Kate, we haven't talked about Pennywise yet, so I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're including him as a character, because I, I want to talk about him. Okay, let me take a sip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is actually a very well-known fun fact that I think people who are familiar with this book or story are know of, and this was a miniseries, and then it was remade, and now there's a movie version, but in both versions, it does not include this part of the book. Thank God, because it's fucked up and I don't know what Stephen King was smoking at the time to think this made sense to put in. Wait, I'll tell you what, because Mose brings this up every time. Stephen King was on a ton of cocaine. Oh. That's why he whipped out so many books. Well, so that makes sense. So there's a part in the book where after the children go in the sewer and they think they defeated Pennywise and they're like, yippee, we did it. But they can't find their way out. So they come up with this plan, which is we need to um, all get closer to strengthen our bond to help us know which way to go. And do you want to take any guesses on what the strengthening of the bond is when there's one girl and six boys? Like they had sex with her? They something? all had sex with her. No! Not like gangbang. Well, I mean, I guess it's a gangbang. <laughs> it oh! But it was consensual. They're um, like 11 and 12. Yeah, it was. I think in the book they might have been like maybe 13. I don't really know. But oh like, my God, Beverly, Katie, take your brains out. I'm Are you okay? <laughs> Oh my god. Um, <laughs> but anyway, thank God there's no Ooh. prepubescent sexy time because, ew. Ew. First of all, like, certain things didn't hold up from 1990. Can you imagine that? Like, this movie would not be a movie anymore. People would be like, ban it, ban it. Well, and I think that's why in the remake they were like, yeah, we ain't fucking touching that shit. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Hell no. Okay, so Bev in general, I think she's also a great actress. I liked her character. I liked that they made her the good shot, that she was the one that had, like, the I did like that, skills. too. I thought that was cool. Because they were kind of like, every now and then they'd be like, you're yeah, for a girl. Which, like, okay, in the 50s, I'm sure boys talk like that so it was relevant even though it was annoying and I didn't like that she was always beat up by her dad or lover so I liked seeing her like strength. I like that she leaves the guy. Like I like how that's not dragged out because yeah. that would have been really annoying to watch. I'm gonna call it right now. Let's put this on air. Let's see what... Okay so when you watch the second part I am going to bet money there's going to be a part that you're not gonna like about her and that's all I'm gonna say about that. So... Well... Fortune teller. I guarantee Katie. you're gonna be like, this was bullshit. I'm gonna be like, mmm, I know. I'm like Miss Cleo. I know the future. <laughs> Done. Okay, I I'm ready for it. And I stand by what I said. I think her, like, Pennywise experience is the scariest. I don't know if you felt you the same. No. No? What did you think was the scariest? Oh, let me think about it. Maybe, okay. you know, I thought they all were equally scary. Well, you know, honest. we didn't talk about this, but I do want to make mention of it because I think this is a really cool part. In Bill's flashback, there is a scene where he is in Georgie's room and he's looking through a photo album by himself where he sees a picture of Georgie and it winks at him. And it's scary because at that yes. point in the movie, like, you had no experience prior to of any, like, supernatural spooky things like that. So that's really the first one you get. Yeah, and you never see this movie like I don't think people are expecting that necessarily and then there's like blood coming out and yeah so I think because of that story and then he screams and his mom picks up the bloody book and right away you're like oh she doesn't realize there's blood all yeah. over her hands and the book when you see Beverly's story of her dad putting his hands all over the bloody sink it like just reminded me of Bill so I don't think yeah. I was as scared I think the concept of it is <sighs> scary though because when I I'm in my fucking bathroom and I'm like <laughs> most times naked. I don't know. Like 
<laughs> I don't want people talking to me from a sink. I don't okay, like we need we, we got to keep cooking because it's going to be like a 19 hour episode. I know my editing's going to hurt. I can already tell. We go to Eddie. And ah! Eddie Eddie's a good character because you need kind of like a nervous Nelly like what was kind of cool about him is he was weak. Yeah. Yet he is the first one in Pennywise's face to like attack him. Yeah. Mm. Which I thought all of them had this like surprise that you weren't prepared for and simultaneously like even as the weak kid with the inhaler or he's not as strong or he's a wimp or whatever like he didn't really let people bully him yeah so i liked him i liked him but his mom creeped me out she was so creepy and then he's an adult and he's living with his mom stop yeah it was i hated it it was really scary and her line of like you don't need friends eddie you don't need friends except for me i was like ah if mom ever says that to us, we're taking her right to the mental hospital. <laughs> because get out of here. Yeah, not good. But, you know, she's classic Munchausen, which Ugh, is that's very so gross. Very scary. Yeah. I like how they do the, like I said before, the asthma kind of subplot. They integrate it a little bit in this part and then you get more of it in the second part. He keeps his inhaler all throughout the movie. And in fact, there's even a part where yes, before I know where you're they going. go to um, you know, fight Pennywise, they go, hey guys, I know it'd be really cool to do. Um, you know, we're 11 Mm-mm. and we don't have access to other drugs, so let's all Mm-mm. take a hit of an inhaler. What? Steven? Literally, pat, take a puff and pass. Uh, it's not a... Take a puff Not a joint. Pass. Not a joint. But it's an inhaler. At this point, I didn't realize, like, the disease... <laughs> he had a fake disease so I kept oh. thinking y'all are trying to kill him like by the time this goes around this giant group of seven people he's gonna have no medicine left he's got no puffs left <laughs> yeah he's going <laughs> to the scariest sewer ever are you crazy mm. are you crazy um also like cooties so stop people don't forget cooties yeah COVID and cooties yeah but Eddie in general like I don't know I always have a soft spot for like nerds like that and I loved that he stood up for Pennywise I was like yeah Eddie get it. His Pennywise experience is a little freaky, too, because again, oh, like... Oh, I hated it. Like, to me, I'm like, oh, man, you're, like, in school, you know? And all the other things we've seen so far have been, like, in a house or in the <sighs> woods, and, like, this is the first one where it's like, oh, no, you're, like, at school, and, like, you're not safe anywhere. Anywhere. And, you know, somehow he makes it out of there. I don't really know. Where is the gym teacher? I don't really know. No mm. one knows. Eddie's very late to his next class. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, but just walking into a shower like that as a little kid is still creepy. It is creepy. It's still like a creepy experience. And now you're telling me the shower heads are coming off the walls. They're they're at like top speed, like a fire hose. Ah! And a clown pops up from the drain. I don't like and it. then he's he's stuck in a corner where he like can't get out. Get out of town. I I don't know. You talk about Beverly and then Eddie. I, I, this might have been scarier for me. This is like totally scary. Well, nothing's safe and everything's wrong and I'm afraid. Go well, team. And, and how about all these kids? I'm telling you, the first thing I'm telling my best friend as an 11 year old is like, I just saw a clown in the fucking showers. Instead, they all like bottle it up inside until they do. Bill one day is like, promise not to laugh at me. And then they're all like, me too. I'm like, oh my god! Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, all right, who's next? Oh, the one and only Seth Green, right? Seth Green, we love him. Have we done any movie with Seth Green before? Yes, we have, Kate. What movie, what movie, what movie? Can't buy me love. Oh. <laughs> love. Oh, how could I forget? He, he was so out little. The farts. <laughs> oh, no. Prime Nostalgia Pod. Thanks to them. Yes. Oh, my thank God. Thank you, Nostalgia Podcast. But he is, he's like definitely older. I love his character. Like, you needed a comedian. If I compare this to Stand By Me, he was like the mouth. Who now I'm making a Goonies reference. Everyone keep up with okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I was there and then I went over there and now I'm back here. But I understand what you mean. I understand. Holy crap, I'm making yes. no sense. But, no, I, I but get it. he was funny. And yes, he was like somewhat offensive. But it was because you had that bully character, the Henry Bowers. Yeah. I never felt like it was like distracting where I was like, wow, this is so offensive. I like actually hate him and I don't want to like listen to him anymore. Yeah. So, but his scare is a little weak with the werewolf. It's weak. And, you know, it's funny because that actually is what he experiences in the book. However, oh, okay. in the book. Look, I think the order of like who experiences what is different. And I actually think he experiences the werewolf a lot earlier on. And he's with Bill and they're riding oh. on a bike like away from the werewolf. And then the werewolf grabs Richie's like shirt or jacket and rips it. And that is like a pivotal point because that's where you realize like, oh shit, these things we're seeing can hurt us. And they oh. kind of do that in this movie because there is a part where like, like, it grabs him, and in all the other experiences the kids have had so far, nobody's been grabbed. And so this is the first one where you're like, oh, like, this can hurt me. Ooh. You're right. It's still, like, a closer connection. Yeah. It's very interesting. I also want to make a reference because I cannot help myself. The person who plays the school principal in this movie is the same person who plays the smoking man in the X Files. Thank you. Good night. I'm I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. So, so, so I, it's important. It's not important for you, but it's important for me, and maybe for at least one listener, it's important for them to reference. But I hope you get on a X Files podcast. <laughs> Uh, one day, Kate, one day you can get on that. Anyway, yeah, I like Richie and I like how they do a good incorporation of, you know, they show them all the kids are hanging out at this point. So at this point, like everyone except for Mike is in the group. But in here is where there's a scene which is kind of like a Bob scene bridge. Ooh, ooh, which one? It's all the kids are sitting in the woods and Bill is about to be like, hey, guys guys, can I tell you something really serious? And then everybody like, you know, grips the table in front of them. And and then we get interrupted by a Scottish (laughs) policeman who goes, the seats preserve us. I, this is where the dairy girls come in because honestly, I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck was happening. You're like, we're in Maine. Why is there an Irish Scottish Sir, I think you wandered on the wrong set, but we're going to allow it because I don't know why. Here we go. Okay, I have a serious Bob scene, but it's in the second half because I had just watched this like a little bit over oh, and no. I cannot wait to talk to you about I that. I bet I know what it is, but I'll keep it inside for next time. Keep it inside. But oh, the, this Irish cop was so funny. He's like, listen, we got another kid killed. <laughs> He's like, hey guys, someone's <laughs> dead. Anyway, like, He's have like, fun. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> You know, so my, instead of me actually finding the killer or figuring this out, um, I'm going to need you guys to always be together and hold hands. And then he's like, pinky swear that you'll do that. I got to go. And we're like, wait, what? There's like eight people who live in this town. I mean, in all honesty, I feel like we all know everyone. I don't understand. I don't even know how there's that many kids to kill. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Richie, whatever. And then the, and then we basically meet Mike, this right? Is, yeah, we get Mike's backstory. Which I liked your point in the beginning. It's like, here's Mike. He's new? Question mark, we assume. Or is he just making a presentation? Or or is he just the black kid who everyone fucking ignored because we're all racist and it's the 50s, <sighs> but now we have to pay attention to him because well, show and tell. Who knows? I well, think that's the answer, though. This is like the craft line where you're like, wait, why? Because he's the black person are we like waiting to the end not giving the full story yeah like, he's running the show uh. from the beginning of the movie so why didn't i meet him earlier is the book that way i actually feel like in the book mike didn't go to the same school as the kids okay. because he does meet them later in the book okay i think the way that he meets them is the same way he met them in this movie which is where he runs to like run away and then he just runs into this group of children being like hello Hello, I'm afraid. Help me. 
And I was annoyed by that. I also was annoyed by the fact that, so as the black kid, you have to now talk about the like horrific history of the town because that's basically what you've experienced. And then instead of like the other kids where you get a switch knife, like somewhat teased and like the, even the friends are like, don't actually cut like Ben. He's going to try to blow him up. Like what? Yeah. But he gets saved by when he meets up with the group and then there's the whole rock fight. I loved that. That was cool. It is cool because it's kind of like a visual representation of like, we're finally sticking up for ourselves. Yeah. We're finally like a big group, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like we're stronger together. We're stronger which is a together. Cool symbolism. Which is symbolism. Yes, exactly. For when they fight the clown. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> and then cool. And then Henry goes, I'm gonna kill you all. And then Richie says the best line, which I personally feel like I would have said in the moment. He goes, get some new material. And I was like, true story, <laughs> Richie. Like, Seth Green, you're the only one to deliver this line. Like, he's, like, so cool. I, and now I was like, thank God wait, you're here. Wait, I want to go back to Mike. So Mike, as an adult, <laughs> is literally, like, Facebook today. Because how does Mike have everyone's phone number? Oh, my God. Okay, wait. <laughs> what I will never understand is how he's able to track down Richie. Because Richie is, like, on SNL. And Mike <laughs> literally gets a direct phone line to him. Like, Mike doesn't even need to talk to an operator. Like, he's like, I know who to call. It's fucking fine. He's like, Tina Fey, is, is he offset? <laughs> okay, send me to his dressing room phone. <laughs> it's like, literally, what? I was like, what is even happening, sir? First of all, no one's picking up a phone no. call. And then, can you imagine this? First of all, this seems more like an email, but like, this text message of it's if I'm like, hey, Kate, it's me, Bridget, from 35 years ago. <laughs> Do you remember the thing that traumatized all of... I swear, this is not a prank text. This is really me. Here's a picture of me. Uh, this is what I look like now. I, I was just like, this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen in 2021. If this I got a happen. text like that, I would be like, mm, I'll read it, but like, won't answer for like four weeks. And then by that time, all the children are dead. So like, useless. Well, and half the time I sign up for these like dumb subscriptions with like different names that I think are funny. And I just get texts like... <laughs> Hey, Karen. Oh, no. All right. So the kids fight back. And boy, oh, boy, is that Henry Bowers not loving that. He's a little bitch. <laughs> he is and I kind of thought he'd like just give up and be done yeah but then he goes down into the sewers no. and I'm like ay 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 but it is kind of adorable that Mike's like okay thanks for letting me be your friend I'm gonna take a picture of all of you new friends immediately <laughs> wait like, what a mamarazzi wait, am I right number one yes he's a mamarazzi number two here's my notes <laughs> for that part I go photo up everybody say <laughs> trauma <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Yes, and this is where, for whatever reason, he again decides to show them all his photo album, even though he just showed them his photo album in class, because they're all in the same class. Whatever, it's fine. Yeah, he seems to have kind of the prop that is the thing he talks about, so okay, fine. But this is where we see a lot of the, like, build-up of Pennywise, and you get somewhat of a back story where you're like 200 years ago he was here that long ago <sighs> his whole thing is like every 30 years he needs to eat he feeds which is why there's shit going on when they're kids in the 50s oh. and then 30 years later when they're adults it happens again and they could have done that better yeah, it wasn't explained well but like that was why they had Mike being like oh yeah and then in this year everybody died and you're like okay what and like but that was why because it's like every 30 years and in the book it is kind of explained a little better where there it's kind of like more of a timeline so that's kind of mm. why they have Mike be that person but it's not connected very well I also felt like because we were going back and forth between like adults, kids, adults, kids. Pennywise only eats kids, right? He only eats kids because kids are afraid of him. And when they're afraid of him, they taste better. Okay. Like chicken. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so... I also felt like 
like looking at the picture and seeing Pennywise jump on a telephone pole, jump off, and then get right in the face Ah. of the kids was terrifying. That's scary. I mean, for 1990, like, some good effects. There were good effects. Like, simple. Agreed. Even with the Georgie picture. And the last character, besides we get to the infamous Pennywise, to me is Stan, but we kind of talked about Stan a lot, and I, I, I mean, I... I feel like you get more of Stan in the second part. Okay. But yeah, so Stan, you know, he don't make it. And I said it four or five times, but <laughs> okay. his wife makes a scrunchy face and it's fucking weird. <laughs> and I mean... That's so weird. Okay. I also um, saw this on Honest Trailers and I loved it. This movie does a lot of people like holding their faces, like Macaulay Culkin style, like, ah, but like... But, like, one hand, in one picture, like, there's a really funny zoom in of Bill as a kid when- Yes, there is. After the Georgie scene, where he's just, like, holding his- he's caressing his hand. Oh, it's so awkward. Yeah, so she finished it off. I'm like, oh, like, what is happening? Um, But I don't feel like it's as relevant to, like, go into Stan details. I think we should get into Tim Curry. Love Tim Curry. Okay, okay, so- I've really kind of, like, tried to analyze on what makes him so good. Yeah. And I think it's because he looks like a normal clown. Like a, like a birthday clown? Yeah, like, like the, like, and I read that because this was on TV. Yes, it was. I keep calling it a movie, but because it was, like, it really came out on TV. Right. They had a lot of, like, censorship stuff. Oh. So they couldn't make him, like, crazy, crazy scary where he's, like, ripping people's arms and heads and all this other stuff because, like, they have the TV stuff to deal with. Right. So it's really just his, like, scary teeth, which are very, very scary. Yeah. But more scary is he looks like a regular clown and his, like, bloodshot eyes, which to me I think of, like, a drunk on drugs clown, which I would actually believe because if that's your job as a clown, I could see you also having other hobbies. I think most clowns are drunk so i i also <laughs> agree with that um i'm sorry to the clown association of- <laughs> uh, are there still clowns please don't haunt me i'm scared <laughs> but like that's what i think makes him so scary and the new one which i am never going to see oh you've but I've never seen-, seen it no wait no and i'm not wait no you can't keep forcing me to see these things. Stop. Okay, I I will I will hold off on it, but I have a story about cuz I saw that with dad in theaters. Ugh. I literally brought dad to the theaters and I think that was probably the last movie he's ever seen in theaters in like many years. Could he handle like scary movies like that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I would think he gets scared. Do you want to hear yeah, it? I want to hear it. I want to hear okay, about it. So it was part one and I think I went to see with him like it was like a matinee or something weird. And I was okay. like, all right, dad, you go sit in the seats and I'll get the food and drinks. Okay, fine. So he's on his own to go figure out where the fuck we're sitting. God help us. <laughs> Bad and I'm idea. buying the drinks and, the, and and again, it's matinee. There's no one there. It's like 10 a.m. or something. <laughs> and I've already seen this movie. And I somehow spilled all of the soda. Like, <laughs> I spilled it everywhere. And I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. And so they gave me another one. Whatever. Okay. So I have popcorn soda for me and him. I go to the theater thinking like, okay, he's a grown adult. He figured out where our <laughs> seats are. It's not difficult. I walk in and he's sitting in the wrong seats. There are assigned <laughs> seats. Now, again, it is a matinee and there's nobody in here. So to me, I'm kind of like, I think we're good. He was sitting in the handicap seats and I had picked okay. like a little closer because I was like, oh, like no one's going to be there. Like, let's sit Wait, closer. Correction, listeners. Our father is handicapped, so he's not just like a jerk that sits in handicapped seats. (laughs) No. He actually is handicapped. Yeah, no, he has a- That choice. He has a physical disability, so I think in his brain he was like, oh, just sit back here. And then we sat, and because it is, again, a movie theater listeners, and I would assume most of you listeners have been to a movie theater in the past five years, minimum. Uh, Our father has not, prior to me dragging him there. 
there. He did not realize there were previews. <laughs> so there are previews happening. And thank God, again, we were the only ones in the theater. And so he starts out loud being like, fast forward. What is it? I don't want to see this. Come on, get to the movie. And I was like, dad, shut the fuck up. Oh my like, God. He's so annoying. This is fucking re- like he did not get it. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, but that was the last time dad's been to the movies to see Stephen King's it part one, the oh, remake in theaters so with me. Yep. Wow. That needs to be a whole podcast. It's just him describing <laughs> how he picked his seats. He would probably be like, I don't remember that. And I'd be like, dad, that was a very cherished memory for me damn it oh no Mm. that's that tracks that tracks he'll be like oh was that the one with the clown you're like dad come on (laughs) pretty much okay but back to tim curry back to pennywise like first of all you do his voice so well and i feel like you did not get enough chances to like quote it favorite lines favorite lines and go I, Georgie, am Pennywise the Dancing Clown, and you are Georgie, so now we know each other, correct? And then Georgie goes, I guess so, and I was like, Georgie, no, run away. Um, I actually feel like Pennywise gets a lot of really good lines that are, I mean, they're, I guess they're kind of scary, but like, they're kind of funny in the part two. Okay. What's the deal in the book about they all float down here? The float, 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 float. Like, I get it. You're in the sewer. There's water. Okay. Water makes you float. But like, is there like a deeper meaning to it all? I think it's like kind of like a metaphor for balloons because balloons float, but it's mainly dead bodies. Um, oh, that's what he means by they all float, the dead bodies. But don't dead bodies sink, or is that wrong? <laughs> well, dead bodies, like, float, and then they, like, oh, yeah, yeah, sink, yeah. Then and they then, come to the top. And then they, yeah. Mm, mm. Okay, well, um... <laughs> Okay. Also, why uh why a clown? Like why does he why is he a clown? Does the book describe that? So, I don't know if it's explicitly uh, stated, but I think the reason that the clown is picked is because it's, it's a form that you can take throughout many different types of decades. Ooh. It's one of those things where it's like I can get close to people and I seem super friendly and I can like make your guard go down and then mm-mm. Mm-mm. Kate, what else should we talk about? Did we hit everything up? Did you feel like you got the first half of this movie recorded in the way you want it? Oh, take the pigtail. Pigtail out. Yes. I have one pigtail to uh, <laughs> mention because I don't think I mentioned this in my synopsis, but I'm going to mention it now. <laughs> In part one, there is a character who is friends with Henry Bowers, who is the scary serial killer bully, who is named Belch. (laughs) Wait. Bridget, why is he named Belch? Uh. Oh! (laughs) Um, he was really stupid. (laughs) Why did he burp at everybody? Why? In your face. It kind of gave me some Jimmy flesh. Oh, no, not our brother. Um, (laughs) thankfully, our brother was not in a greaser gang that, uh, frequented, you know, sewer drains. But yes, Belch Mm, was a character. mm -hmm. And the reason I would like to bring him up is because he does play a role in part two. Oh. But in part one, one, he's kind of like a little henchman, whatever, and then yeah. he dies. Like oh, he did. He, he dies creepy. The his body folds and it's pulled backwards into a pipe. I like that effect. Jesus. I think that's scary. I thought it was really scary, and what made it scary to me was the speed. <gasps> oh. He was pulled really slow. Yeah. <laughs> I hated it. I hated all of it. It was very creepy, and so you're like, oh, he dead, and then 
there's like another Henry Bowers friend that also dies, but like we don't really care about him. Um, mm, we can't keep up with all no, of his he, henchmen. I don't know. Henchmen's a good word. We don't care about him, but like Belch is important. Okay. But Henry witnesses this and Stan gets away and Henry sees these lights and his hair turns white and he, even though again they don't explain it, but you see it in part two, Henry then kind of goes crazy. So oh. it is a plot point um, that you later learn, but I think it's worth okay, mentioning okay. now so we can kind Good of be setup. mentally prepared. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Well, hot damn. Okay, typically at the end of our shows, we say, hey, it's my turn for a pick, but no, no, no. We know what the pick is because <laughs> I gotta finish this stupid ass movie. It's, it, yeah, because Katie took over as Pennywise does. Katie has officially taken the entire wine bottle and is putting it back. Wine bottle's done. It's very much a metaphor for this podcast. Um, this, is, this is our... We have now hit two hours of recording and oh my we've God. only done half the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Editing is going to hurt me. Woo! All right, well, Bridge, I mean, I know the answer because, like, we're halfway done. But, like, it, let's say this was a standalone, right? Because it kind of sets yeah, yeah, us yeah. up like a standalone. Like, it maybe could be a standalone, but we don't know. Would you watch it or don't watch it? Absolutely watch yeah. it. It's terrifying to me. Oh! If I ask the question to you, this is like your favorite movie. So, of course, you're going to tell people to watch it, right? I love this movie. I said this in our last episode, which was The Craft. I have literally forced all of my friends and maybe even people who were not my friends who just happened to kind of like, (laughs) you know, tag along with us during trick-or-treating and they ended up at my house on Halloween. Yeah, you're watching this movie because I don't give a shit if you like it or not. I'm putting it on. Wow. But yes, we are expected to next week. We will watch part two which is mm, the adults but like mm, okay we'll see we'll see how we feel there's still some scary parts i think but okay okay i don't think you're going to feel as scared watching part two but you'll have to let me know what you think about that well take a pause listeners make some popcorn have some soda you got a whole week to watch the second half like me pick daylight have some emotional eating cookies ready to go (laughs) and let's do this Yes. Yes. And, um, well, Bridge. Yeah. I just want to say, um, (laughs) (laughs) oh my God, too so stupid. I'm going to say it. If, (laughs) if you, uh, ran to me and a group of people and you were like, oh my God, help, I'm going to die. I would, I mean, maybe grab a rock, but also use my like conflict resolution skills. Wow. But probably end with a rock if it was like, you know. Wow. Well, Kate, (laughs) if you were hanging out with your friend in the woods, trying real hard to make a dam, I would make sure to let you know how to actually build one. (laughs) You use boards, guys. Like, fucking (laughs) duh. Shit. I was using pebbles. Thank God Ben came along. Because, like, I would never do it without him. Yeah. All right, folks. That's it. And, uh, what, oh, we gotta talk about ourselves. Well, right? And if you, <laughs> um, hate bullies. Yes. And clowns. Clowns. Evil clowns. Evil clowns. And yes. Don't want to throw rocks, but you're not sure what to do, but your, you know, school uh, psychologist and uh, or counselor was like, no, 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 use your words, but you're scared. <laughs> you should write us a review. Hey. We <laughs> love reviews. We love written reviews. You can review us on Apple Podcasts along with some other podcasting apps. We also have a website, sisterswhoseenit.com. If you scroll down on the main page, there is a form you can fill out to request a movie. So we do have a list we're going through. You know, we're almost at the end of spoopy season, y'all. But listen, Katie loves spoops. Yeah, but holiday movies coming up. Like Mm -hmm. November, December. Like, I'm very interested to see what people select. Yes. 
Yes. And Bridge, what else can they do on our website? They can buy us wine because Katie finished it. Woo! It's all done. It was a Sauvignon Blanc. It's fucking empty. <laughs> <laughs> that is not floating because no. it is floating empty. in my belly. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Ko-Fi site that you can basically send us money. Yeah. That money will go to the podcast, to us, as a thank you for doing this each week and editing and just just endlessly watching these old movies and letting you know that they're awesome and you should watch them or they suck and you should stay away from them. Yes. So check all that out and we hope to hear from you. So listeners again, just as a reminder, next week we will be doing Stephen King's It Part 2 for you. 1990. 1990. After the woman after the who was married to adult Stan. Yeah. Finds him dead what? in the bathtub, does a weird scrunchy face. face. That's part two. Part two. Yes. Correct. Correct. It's around one hour and 40 minutes. Figure it out on your fucking own. You're all adults. <laughs> I love you. Can you can you say goodbye as Pennywise? <laughs> goodbye, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Bye-bye. I'm out. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Sisters Who Seen It. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out our website at sisterswhoseenit.com, where you can email us, request movies to be reviewed, and keep up to date with all things sisters. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next week.